All right, let's get right into the word this morning. <clears throat> and if you would, find your way over to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We'll read some scripture here. You know, the Lord, He loves a praying church. Uh, it's His desire for our petitions to be given unto Him through the one that's uh, seated at His right hand. That is Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us there that he's, uh, he placed him there. He took him off the cross, uh, took him out of the tomb, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. And I hope today that when you pray that you uh, have a desire there to, to do uh, that which he would have you. Be not ashamed of the gospel, Paul said. <clears throat> we'll see if we can get these bugs worked out here in a minute. You might be down top of the tie. Can you put it on the other side on top of the side? <laughs> Seems like that helps, huh? Yeah, that helps, yeah. All right, we'll get this figured out one of these days. Uh, I hope it's a blessing to you that you can hear me a little bit better, and that might be a good or a bad thing for me. Uh, I am a quiet person. Sometimes some people hear something that uh, not exactly what I said, but it sounds a little bit different. So hopefully we can straighten that out. But in the 8th chapter of John, we'll uh, try to read just a little bit this morning. I hope the Lord bless you as you listen along. hope you've had time to pray this week, made time to talk to the Lord, lay things on Him. Be willing to listen to what the Lord would have you to do. <clears throat> we we'll start here in the 12th verse. We'll probably read quite a bit here, so bear with me this morning. In the 12th verse of the 8th chapter of John, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whether I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. But I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony to men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. Then they said unto him, Where is thy Father? And Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And these words spake Jesus in the treasure. And as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then Jesus again uh, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me. And shall die in your sins, whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he said, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak of thee. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always of those things that please him. Amen. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And this last verse we're going to read says, And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. <clears throat> and we'll stop reading there at the 32nd verse. You would uh, bow your head just for a moment of prayer one more time. Heavenly Father, 
we thank you, Lord, for the holy word that we have before us, for knowing that truth, for that truth is Jesus Christ today. We believe that he uh, ascended down, was born of a virgin, was put on the cruel cross, was laid in the empty tomb, was resurrected the third day, and seated at the right hand of you today. And we thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have in that precious blood, that atonement that was made, the New Testament that was given. We thank you, Lord, to be under grace today by the command that has been given, Lord. Let's just know our true sin transgression against thee, Lord, but by grace are we saved. It is a gift of God. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that was given. We pray, Lord, that you bless us today as we try to work through the wonderful Word of God today. Touch the heart of that one that's troubled, that's in time of need, whatever the need might be, Lord. They are the author and finisher of our faith, and we pray this morning that you have thy way with us, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I know it's a fairly lengthy reading, <clears throat> and uh, I hope that you're able to follow along, because I have a hard time sometimes getting the words to come out, but uh, when you read along, you can kind of see where we're going, and uh, sometime this week or this afternoon, I would invite you to go back and read through this scripture again, but I want us to look at the fact that uh, you shall know the truth, and it says the truth shall make you free, and uh, the Jews told him here, he said, well, we, uh, we of Abraham, see, we're not ever been in bondage to anyone, why in the world uh, would we have to be free, you see? And there'll be many people to say today that we might go out and we might knock on the door. We might ask them where you stand. Or maybe you uh, say, well, I've, uh, I, I ask you, do you know if you've been saved? And they say, well, what need have I got of uh, being redeemed? You know what? Um, I do just fine. I live uh, like I should. But you know what need is it for me that I might be uh, saved? What's this salvation that you live, that you talk about, you see? <clears throat> and I hope today that... Uh, you uh, you enjoy what God has done for you. If you've been saved, I hope you have a joy in you. I hope that your countenance has been changed. And uh, I've heard it said uh, many times uh, the way that, uh, you know, when somebody's uh, full of the Spirit or maybe when God's moving on them, what's uh, one of the first uh, things that you see? It's, it's the face that lights up that you, uh, you see a difference in. And you know, and then after that, you might hear uh, the words that said. You know, no longer is a certain thing said or done. Uh, something, there's a change that's happened there that's very noticeable, is it not? And uh, maybe you might see the movements of the fleshly body that no longer uh, go in certain directions, but now they're on a straight and narrow way that's uh, in a way that honors God, you see. Do you have a hope today that you can be pleasing unto God? He, uh, he is, if you've been redeemed today, He's done a work far greater than anything that will ever happen to you down here on this miserable earth that we live in, you see. He was able to touch you. And hallelujah today that you knew the truth. He says here <clears throat> that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am He. You know, today uh, is the many doctrines that's going forth that disannounce the birth and the, and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without so, you have nothing, do you? Uh, or maybe uh, they might uh, recognize the birth, and maybe they might recognize the crucifixion, but they say, well, he's never come out of the tomb yet. You know, it's uh, all taken in one, you see. Uh, Jesus, who he said he was, was sufficient for you. And I don't know if we have any preaching today, the Lord's going to do it because uh, uh, I've read through this this week and, you know, sometimes you get liberty uh, about that and sometimes you don't. But uh, if the Lord have his way today, I pray that he speaks to your heart through his holy word and what a privilege it is. You know, uh, have you ever thought somebody ever asked you to pray? Have you ever thought, boy, it's a, it's a privilege to get to pray? For a long time, when people would call on me to pray, boy, I, I just try to hide behind somebody, especially sitting in the church house, you know, closing prayer, opening prayer, the uh, preacher would call on me, and i kind of get behind somebody, maybe he wouldn't see me, because I didn't want to do it. You say, well, that's kind of silly. You know, we ought to have a, a joy about it. There'll be a joy uh, willing there to be able to have the ability to pray, you see. And the why is it? Because we know the truth. What is the truth today? What is the truth to you today? Do you know today that uh, if you leave this world, are you secure? Are you anchored in Jesus? Are you truly, do you know Him? Do you know the Father? 
Do you know his ways? Do you know his hopes? Do you have assurance today? <clears throat> Maybe you get tired of me asking you, but I tell you what, it's the one thing uh, that you need to be for certain about. Young people, uh, as you sit here today, to know that you know that you know that God is God. And today we need to let him be God, you see. <clears throat> not water him down and not uh, take away or add to him, but take the word, the word of truth here that we find. You know, and I, I read through a lot here, but the main point today, I want us to look at this truth here that we have. Uh, if you would, uh, I got a little spot over here in the Ephesian letter. We'll, we'll probably stay in for a minute, but in the first chapter of the Ephesian letter, and uh, I'm not going to read all this, but we're going to pick up in the 13th verse here. Speaking of this one, uh, Christ Jesus, whom we've trusted in. And in the 13th verse, it says, In whom, also, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit. Now, if you go over in the fourth chapter, and I believe it's the 29th verse, I believe, I guess we'll go over and look real quick. But he says here that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's in the 30th verse, it says we're sealed unto the day of redemption. That holy seal that said it's finished there. Uh, when the Lord uh, spoke peace to you, it was sufficient enough, was it not? He says here that, uh, how did you get that seal? It says you heard what? The word of truth there. It wasn't uh, something to make believe, but you heard the word of truth. If you've been saved today, you've, uh, you've heard of this one called Jesus. And over in uh, the uh, Roman letter, I believe it is, and if you want to turn there, you can. I, I guess we'll be turning a little bit today. That'll be okay. In the 10th chapter here, the Roman letter, it says, uh, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and the mouth the confession is made unto salvation. And if you go on down to the 15th verse, it says... Uh, how shall they, or in the 14th verse, says, How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And it says, How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear, you see? Today I want you to think this morning, and uh, I brought it up before Sunday school, maybe have an outreach to some of these that's uh, out and about around our community. They don't have to be right here close by, but somewhere. How shall they hear the Word of God unless uh, the Word go forth? You say, well, that's the preacher's job, right? Well, as you leave here today, brother, uh, you live a life that is a reflection, you see, of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been born again, there's something that's been changed about you. Is that right? Uh, do you have a new body that God has given you? Paul said, uh, you're a new creature in Christ. All things is passed away. All things has become new. Do you believe that today? And so therefore, when you go forth with this new kindness and this new uh, walk that you have with the Lord, and you say, well, brother, that's been many years ago. Well, see, today's the day that you can begin and you can just take on off for the Lord if you, if you so choose to. Stop your running your seat. Stop turning away and be willing to be humble before Lord Almighty God, and let Him use you in whatever way that might be. Because uh, I'm going to tell you from my own experience for a long time now, I put off uh, the uh, fears of doing certain things for God, uh, but I tell you what, the Lord has kindled a little fire in me, and I hope He does the same for you that gives you a wantness uh, to be that outreach and that light for those that have yet to come and know Him, because we're living in a day that is very uncertain, you see. And we ought to have a zeal about us and a wantness to share this uh, great change that has occurred within us. You see, these people today, uh, what they call a great change, don't jive with what I call a great change. They call a great change being able to go to the doctor and to, and to form their body into what it wasn't designed to be, you see. Uh, Jesus has been doing this for a long time. He took uh, this old body and he made it a new body. He didn't change uh, what it was to start with, but he made it something new, you see. The circumcision of the heart, you see. Uh, the, 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 the stoniness there uh, was a tore away and all things become new today. Do you uh, have a, a zeal about you? I just ask you today, is there an excitement about you today uh, to get to share uh, the truly that you know of the one that's hanging all this up today? Do you have, is there something about you uh, that makes you blow above all other things that you can do? Now I love to do a lot of things down here. You know, I spent the last uh, 17 years driving a big truck. Now I like it. I spent most of my life burning wheel drives. I don't mind that. Things that I enjoy to do that are work to me, but I enjoy them, you see. But there's a joy that's far greater 
of knowing that, that we've been entrusted with the gospel to reach out to somebody that is, that is far from being at peace with themselves or with this world or constantly in torment because why? They are yet to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He says here that in whom he's trusted after, this is in Ephesians now, chapter 1, ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. It says, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit. So when you hear, what is it that draws you to the Word of God? Do you have, is there something that draws you to Mount Pisgah this morning? Is there something that draws you maybe uh, uh, to, to, to do certain things? You see, that drawn power of the Holy Spirit uh, that dwelleth within you has a drawn ability to put you in places, Lord, that you need to be. And it says you were sealed with that Holy Spirit. And it says here in the 14th verse, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption. So we have something to hold us until our redemption. You see, we're going to leave this world one day to be what? To be made perfect with God. You see, we're not going to be perfect down here. They, some people probably think that they are. You see, there's none righteous, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3. No, not one. But we ought to have a desire, you see, to be as Christ made us. And you see that change that he has given you, if you've been born again, there's something new. It's a new life. You see, you ought to have a desire there to enjoy that seal. What is a seal today? You know, you go by, you go just you just go in the store and buy you a bottle of Coke or RC, and you break that seal. You know, it's sealed there to keep it fresh. Is that right? It's got a seal on it there, and when you break that seal, you better drink it because it's going to lose all its fizz, ain't it? Or if you buy something, a uh, package of uh, something in the store that's sealed in plastic, and you poke a hole in it, you better do something with it because it's going to spoil if you don't, you see. See, we're sealed until the day of redemption, that we be redeemed. And see, our ticket's been punched. <clears throat> it's been paid in full and therefore uh, no longer are we after something there uh, to occupy our time here because God has redeemed us. He's paid the price for us. The soul that belongs to Him. Uh, we used to sing that song where the soul of man uh, never dies. It says, which is our earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We are a purchased possession of that. Whose possession are we in? You say, we belong, what's the, what's the song that this church loves to sing? I love to hear them sing it. I belong to a king who calls me his own. I wish Sheila was here this morning because I know she loves that whole song, don't she? It says, purchase possession unto the praise of his glory. We belong to somebody today. We've been bought with a price. You say, don't ever think for a minute that your experience is any less than somebody else's. Don't ever think that what God has done for you is any less than what somebody else might say because in the sight of God, you have been bought with His price. He didn't have to raise it a little bit for somebody else. He didn't. It wasn't a little cheaper for you. It wasn't, you know, we're all guilty. We all stand before Him guilty. He saw something there that was all uh, common with us. We all born under sin. You see, in one day it was paid. No more do we need sacrifice for the sinfulness of this body that we have. You know, what a great thought it is today that it was good enough one time. You know, rest yourself today. Enjoy uh, the day that God has given us. Enjoy uh, being able to take off and see fit just to relax. You see, because next week I hope you hit it hard for God. I hope you uh, go uh, as hard as you can for Him. You see, these jobs that we have, they supply our needs for down here, don't they? You see, we ought to be about the Lord's work, being willing to appreciate that seal that's been put up on it. You know, if you lost today and if you don't know Him, you see, it says you heard the word of truth. Now, what is the word of truth today? <clears throat> what is that word today? If you leave this world apart from Him, I'm going to tell you the truth today, and it's not popular to heal. You want to get something stirred up, 
You tell somebody that if they don't come to know the Lord and the free pardon of sin, that if they lost and undone, that there's a torment awaiting for them. You say, well, I don't believe in the next life. I don't believe in eternity. I don't believe in this. So that, that doesn't change God. God is the same yesterday and today and forever. You know, uh, thanks be to God, we're under grace today. But you see, what brings conviction up on this heart? What is it that, in that truth that we hear that brings conviction up on you to know uh, just where you stand before Him? What was it there that got you uh, one time that let you know that you was lost and hell bound before Him? He says here in the 20th chapter Exodus, and I don't know where this is going to feed in, but we're going to put it out here. It says, I am the Lord thy God, uh, which has brought thee out to the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Are you guilty today? It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water of the earth. Are you guilty today of putting anything before God? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. God's jealous of you today. He put the seal on you. He wants you, you see. He don't want to share you with the world. He's a jealous God today. Are you jealous over your spouse? Or I don't like to call it spouse. Are you, are you jealous over your wife or your husband or your children? Are you fighting for them for the uh, eyes of the world? He says, I'm a jealous God. Are you guilty today of having a jealous God uh, fight for you? He says, uh, he says, I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Uh, them that hate me. You see, the blood is on our hands, you see. If you don't reach out to those that's coming on after you, you say, well, it's not going to be nothing to me when I'm dead and gone. Well, brother, you're wrong today. Are you going to be guilty of that jealous God? Uh, one of these days, we're going to have to stand before Him, you see. Uh, these things that's been written down and took an account of, our life is going to be put before you see, you see, we're sealed unto the day of redemption. But I'm going to tell you today, you're going to have to stand accountable uh, more so for what you didn't do than those things that was done, you see. Are you guilty this morning? It says, showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keeps my commandments. You see, God loves you today. He's continuing that mercy because He tells us in Ecclesiastes, He says that mercy endures forever today. Hallelujah today. Can you say, uh, praise God that his mercy continueth on for you. Or maybe today you just find you don't need none. But well, brother, I get up every morning and ask him uh, just to forgive me for what I'm about to do because I know I'm going to mess up at some point, you see. The preacher is not perfect this morning. And neither are you, brother. Are you guilty this morning of any of these things? Does it bring conviction up on you today? Uh, do you know? You say, well, I'm doing just fine. Well, I'm going to look at this right here. It says, thou shalt not take uh, the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless. It says uh, that taketh his name in vain. That's not just putting a couple words together in anger. I'm talking about uh, taking these other things and putting in the image of him, you see, and, and, and distorting his honor and distorting his grace because it's perfect and it's sufficient. It doesn't need us to do anything to it. We don't have to justify our needs. We just need to follow what God is God. You, you just let him in your house be who he is. You you don't have to make him fit in there because he wants to be in there, you see. You don't have to find a place for him. You need to let him do the leading, you see. Have you ever seen a plate on the back of a car or a sticker that says, Jesus is my pilot? Well, is he piloting you today? Or are you before him guilty? Or are you letting him right behind you, you see? They said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy today. Brother, we all get to that. Today, it says, it says here in the ninth verse, six days shall thou love Labor and do all thy work. Brother, do you work as hard as you can? Do you look forward to Sunday morning? Do you look forward to the day that God has appointed unto us just to rest? Not have to be about this world. It says, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And you say, well, this is in the Old Testament. Well, brother, I'm going to tell you today, does it convict your heart today to know of all the things? And I know some of you just got to work, or maybe there's things to do, you see. But you see, God, has, uh, He so loves you today. We love Him because He first loved us. He so loved you today. Not only did He give you the ability uh, to work and do a, a great work for Him, but He also gave you time to catch up and to rest from it. He don't aim for you to work your life away. 
It says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, and he rested the Sabbath day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Are you guilty today? Thou shalt not kill. Are you guilty? They said, Well, brother, I ain't killed nobody. Well, brother, what uh, spirit have you killed here lately? What movement has you put up? Have you put your foot in the way? What stumbling block have you placed in somebody's way, brother? And brother, I'm guilty, you see. Can you stand before God guilty? You see, His mercy there extended up on us there that we might find forgiveness, you see. He says, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. What have you stolen? He says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Brother, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, it's a hard thing sometimes to get along with your neighbors. Is that right? You know, I love them dearly, but sometimes it's just hard to get along with them, you see. He says, uh, he says Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Sometimes you just want to you just want to uh, back away from them and, and uh, you just want to uh, move out there, you see, but sometimes <clears throat> you might be the only light. Somebody, somewhere, you know, not everybody's going to win the argument, are they? Not everybody's going to be right all the time. <coughs> Somebody is going to be wrong. He says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor shall covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is his neighbor's. You say, now what do you say you read all that for? Brother, it's truth. What is truth this morning? Pilate asked uh, Jesus, what is truth? He says here, and we read it, he says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Are you a do-gooder today? Is everything just well with you? You know, sometimes we are on hindrance and letting God work in it. Sometimes we are, uh, just get in the way because you say we're all right. We've got to get past looking at what we have done or what we're going to do and look at how God would use us. These people here, he says, he reached to them. You know, he said, he said, you know, you don't know me. You don't know my father. You don't know me. If you knew him, you'd know me. He says, they understood not that he spake to them of the father. He says, you shall know the truth. If you know Christ... You see, the Father says, No man cometh unto me except the Father draw me. says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. He's the life today, you see. We might have a living and breathing visible body today, but brother, it's a dead. And this Christ is the life in it. He says he's the light of the world. He's the light in these bodies, you see. God so loved the world, Christ so loved the church, you see. Church of his body. Well, what do they tell him here? It says, we be Abraham's seeds and we never have been in bondage to any man. You know, what are you saying? Well, sometimes when you reach somebody or you try to talk to them, the first thing they want to say, well, I ain't never done nothing. See, I'm not guilty. You see, we read through uh, what the God gave them there in Exodus. Have you ever been not guilty of anything? You see, can you live a whole day without uh, transgression against the Almighty God? And what's the, what's the transgression today? Seems like I just read this this morning. Maybe this is where we're going to put it at. <clears throat> what's that transgression that we have? It says in the uh, First John chapter. 3 and verse 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Do you have sin in your life today? Is there something there that's uh, causing you conflict with the Lord from, from doing what He'd have you do? Something that you need to quit or get away from or step out of? But you say, Well, I've got to be there. Do you really have to? He said, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is what? He's a servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If therefore the son that shall make you free, so who makes us free? We just read it, brother. If the son make you free, ye shall be free indeed. What? 
free from the sin. You see, and sometimes we overlook these things and uh, we, uh, we take it up on ourselves that we're going to do it my way. I'm going to have it my way. Lord, I, I, I'm doing just fine like I am. Have you ever said to yourself, it's, it's, it's okay, I'm doing just fine. You know, I don't need, uh, you know, maybe the Lord's uh, impressing on you something to do. Maybe you know what you need to do, but yet you're just going to go about your way, you see. You see, there's been a many uh, that will reject, maybe for one little reason. Well, I don't want to tell my experience. Well, if you've been saved, you want to tell your experience. I just tell you. You can hold it for a little while, but you're going to want to share that. You want to share it. It'll have a joy that it brings you, does it not? Maybe somebody here doesn't like to share it. I don't know, but I believe the Lord, when He does something for you, you want to tell about it. If you, if you love Him at all, just a little bit, you want to share how God has moved in your life. Not to say that you don't love Him. I'm just saying sometimes, you know, we let it be known. You see, sometimes we take it upon ourselves uh, to do things, and it don't work, does it? I know I might be boring you today at this morning, but we'll go a little bit farther here. I went down uh, Thursday night and was working on a, a log loader in the woods, and that thing hit that oil all over it, all over the ground, under it, and everywhere else. And I wasn't really prepared, prepared for it. I had a couple of fire extinguishers there, but I spent more time stomping out wood chips and oil burning than I did working on it. Every time I'd uh, try to weld, I only did catch on fire. So I just quit. I come on home. I got to make sure everything went out and went on home. I thought, well, I'll come back tomorrow. And I'll be a little bit better prepared for it. <clears throat> and I had it in my head. I, I got me some lime and took home with me. And I was going to throw that lime on the ground and soak up all that oil and cover up all the stuff. But, you know, y'all get what you want to out of this because the old boy that owned it. And I got there. He washed it off. He said he washed away all that stuff on there. All that oil. He had a pressure washer down there. Where that come from, I don't know. He got down there, he washed all that off. It was clean. I still got nasty, you see, but when I started burning rods on, didn't nothing catch on fire. I just worked along, didn't have to worry about it. It was clean. You see. You can try to tiptoe through this world, you see, brother. If you lost, you can try to stomp it out as you go and defend and to do things that you think is going to be sufficient enough. You know, when I tell you one of the biggest things that, that turns people away uh, from uh, working for God is when somebody else lets them know uh, that, or lets the rest of the church know, maybe, uh, where they stand before the Lord. Sometimes, you know, I had, uh, when, the, when the preacher there where we went uh, knew that I was lost, he was uh, ready uh, to tell everybody that I was lost, you see. And I didn't want nobody to know as if they didn't already. You see, I wanted that to be uh, my little secret. But you see, it's known whenever you are walking away from God. You don't have to let it be known. You know, you can see if you with the Lord, you can see one that's not with God. By what? We see by fruits, don't we? We fruit bearing trees, are we not? What kind of fruit are you putting out today, you see? But you see, sometimes it can be a great stumbling block uh, whenever you uh, try to do these things upon your own, you see. But sometimes we might uh, sprinkle some stuff on it and uh, we might be able to sustain it for a little while. But you see, it's not until it gets clean for the Holy Spirit of God, you see. That precious blood that was shed uh, for you today, uh, you see, you have the ability uh, to be plunged and to be made clean, do you not? Uh, do you believe today that it's sufficient enough if you're saved today? To say amen. I pray that you can say within your heart that you're saved today. Is anybody here saved today? I hope that you are. Uh, praise God for you today. But I'm going to tell you, if you're lost and apart from Him, you have the same ability, you see. It's not changed none. He said, I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. Do you believe that today? Uh, do you truly believe uh, that he, he will come to you? Maybe you're waiting on Him. Maybe you just rejected Him. I don't know. That's between you and God, you see. But you must be clean. How is that? <clears throat> because why? We just read it here, brother. It says, you heard the word of truth. When you hear the word of truth, no longer will handshake salvation suffice you. When you hear the truth of Jesus Christ, no longer will some of these other things that's been taught you be sufficient. 
You'll be a wonder. I know this from a fact, from people I've met. You see, I thought I had it in my head for a long time that I had to be in the church to be saved. That I had to come to this old bench that we put up here. We don't worship a bench. People say, well, let's have us up. Let's come down to the altar. That might be okay, you see, but the Lord, He can move on you wherever that He chooses to. Some people say, well, this is a good place to start. Well, brother, that's not necessarily true, you see. You start there when the Lord starts dealing with you. And you might be going down the road. You might be in the bathroom. You might be on the, on the tractor. You might be in the bedroom asleep. And the Lord impress upon you. That's where you start. That's a good place to start is when the Lord starts dealing with you, you see. It's not going to be uh, any certain way, you see, that you want it to be. It's, it's God's way. And if you're in the will of God and falling in His way, it'll be done as He sees fit, you see. You'll get what is sufficient for you. It says here that, uh, that, that the gospel, of your salvation. You see, you must hear, uh, you see, uh, through conviction there of what it is that you have a need of. Some people, they say, come on up here. We'll line them up and we'll say a prayer. Have you, ever, you know, and I'm not making this stuff up. This is real now. Repeat after me. You see, repeating a prayer what does that do? It does absolutely nothing. If God is not the one that leads me, I'm not going to save you. Nobody in here has saving power. The saving power is done through the blood of Christ that was freely given for you. He says that is the earnest of our inheritance. So that tells me today that when you save, that's just the beginning. To be saved is a, a new beginning. To be uh, born, to start out on the sincere milk of the Word, the truth, and you begin to grow. And as you begin to grow, you get on over on the meats, and you know what, you, what happens next, brother? You start doing things for God, don't you? You know, and it's a shame sometimes. Uh, I guess you call me a late bloomer in the Lord because uh, for a long time now I've just, uh, just been doing. It's uh, go-getting and doing so it really does things for God. You see, sometimes we just don't, uh, we're not willing. But it takes time to get, you know, some people, I'm sure they jump out there and they go head first and, they, and they, they're always strong their whole ministry with the Lord. And that's what you have today if you've been saved. you got a ministry with the Lord. He, he's done something for you that you ought to be that mirror, that reflection of Him. You know, that wherever you go, that the world might see him that's changed you living within you. Not trying to rain on anybody's parade today, by no means. But I want you to be lifted up because you have something great today, do you not? We have something great today. It ought to make you happy to know that the very God of this world, you know, maybe we're not serious enough about it. I don't know, but the more time, I'm just going to tell you today, the more time you spend reading and studying of Him, the more real He gets to you. And you say, well, I know God's real. I'm not talking in, in knowing. I'm talking about seeing and feeling and witnessing and getting to experience God. You know, it's one thing to profess and get up and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. But brother, that is the beginning of it. He saved us and sealed us until the day of redemption that we might be living unto Him. We've got some hope today, don't we? We've got a new life that's been given. And I hope today you experience that new life. You know, you don't have to be in here. If you, but I pray if, you, if you've been saved, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you need to let it be known. Maybe the Lord has uh, done something great in your life. You just need to let it be known. Be not ashamed. The Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, that saving power that we have today, I'll tell you what, it's a, I guess I've got a mirror in front of me today, preaching to myself, but you see, God has a way of uh, giving each one of us what we need, doesn't he? And I hope that he, he feels you in the way that you need, so we have a lot to be in prayer for, you know, and it's, uh, it's the beginning of it, you see, that prayer life that we have, and once, uh, once you have the, you know, have you ever had the attention of God for a little while and just felt Him, His presence there so close to you, you didn't want to move, and 
you know, uh, we was talking about having our, our revival here, and I remember last fall when we had it, you know, you just didn't want it to end, did you? You just wanted it to keep on and going. You said, we have that ability. You know, we don't have to quit. We, we can just keep on and going with the Lord. I tell you, the, the more that you devote and the more time you spend and the more uh, a fellowship you have with the Lord, the, the greater that feeling will be. You know, he wants to use you. He wants to guide you and direct you. You see what you're missing out if you lost today? You're missing a joy there that never ends. Joy that just keeps on going, don't it? I don't know what your heart's need is. I guess that's as far as I'm going to go today. I hope that the Lord... Uh, can speak to you and maybe give you a little direction this week. Maybe as you got a big decision to make or whatever is on your plate this week. Maybe uh, maybe there's something in there that uh, that only you know you don't have to tell me anybody, but the Lord He knows all about it. And you see, He He truly is in control. But I tell you what, when you take your petitions unto Him, you know what it, what does it mean to you today to get the attention of God? You see, sometimes there's some things that you have to get out of the way there. Some things you got to give up and step away from to get where you need to be. Be willing there. Be willing to step away from this world. Don't get too glued down to it. You know, do you really believe this morning that he is coming again? And you say uh, within your heart that I'm waiting for you, Lord. I said, uh, me and uh, Brother Wales were talking here a while back, and I said, it'd be a good day for the Lord to come again. He said, well, I said, I wish he'd just wait a little bit longer. I said, I know a lot of people that I'd like to reach out to. You know, we ought to have an attitude. We're going to reach out as much as we can. Be willing to take off, but be willing there uh, to be a, to be a, what he'd have you to be today. It's not easy. I'll just tell you, it's not easy in, in this fleshly body. But whenever you unite it with the Lord, it's easier and easier every time you, you reach out. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard uh, to bring up and ask somebody, you know, uh, to start a conversation, I guess you could say, about the Lord, but the more more so, the more uh, practice you have and the more times uh, that you that you step out there on that limb of faith there, the easier it gets. You know, I asked Nolan the other day, he's riding his bicycle, and he probably wouldn't like this, but he still got his training wheels on it, and I said, you want to take him off? And he said, no. And I said, I'll hold on to you. He said, no, let's just leave him on. So we left him on. One of these days, we're going to peel them things off, and he's going to take off. You see, it's going to be hard for a little while, but it'll get easy, won't it? The more that you do it, sometimes you just need to step on out there. Let God, uh, he'll hold on to you, I promise you. When you fix the phone him and, and you're about his will, he'll, he'll, he'll be there with you, I promise you that. God bless you, my prayer. I hope you have a good day. The Lord be encouraged in the way that you need this morning. we got, you know, things that's really not that bad if you think about it. It can be. Some people, boy, they can really dance in the spirit, can't they? Just a minute, you're ready to, ready to go crawl in the hole because things is the skies are falling, they say. You see, it's really not that bad if you've been, uh, if you have a redemption uh, in that seal up on you today, you know, you have something that... Uh, can go with you and lead you and direct you. You have something today that fights your battles for you, that one, that Holy Spirit that's been given. <clears throat> Are you enjoying your salvation today? Do you truly enjoy it? I hope that you do. God bless you today. <clears throat> do you have anybody have a word on your hearts this morning? Anything?